So welcome back and we'll look at uh, a reversible adiabatic process for an ideal gas. So let's say we have an ideal gas which is in some container which is insulated. Uh, let's say this container is deformable but insulated so it can undergo an adiabatic process where it increases or decreases in volume. So we know that the TDS relations uh, for a gas or even for other substances are given by TDS is equal to dH minus BDP or TDS is equal to du plus PdV. These are of course the Gibbs relations which we have used earlier as well to calculate the change in entropy when a gas or a liquid or a solid undergoes a process. Now what we can do is we can divide by T. So we get dS is equal to dH by T minus VdP or if you divide this portion by T we get du by T plus P by T dV. Uh, of course we get this expression only up to here. But now if we make the assumption that we are looking at a reversible adiabatic process, then we know that ds is equal to 0. So we get this RHS as being equal to 0. So this is for a reversible adiabatic process for in any substance. What we can also do now is to assume that we have an ideal gas. And we know that for an ideal gas, the internal energy is a function only of temperature and the enthalpy is only a function of temperature. So what we see is for an ideal gas, du is Cv dt. And we can substitute this back into this expression over here. So what we can do is now we can use this expression and substitute this back. So we get 0 is equal to Cv dt by t plus P by t into dv. Uh, this is also something we have used earlier while calculating uh, finding relations, for example, for drawing different processes on PV diagrams or TS diagrams and so on. Now, for an ideal gas, we also know that PV is equal to RT, where P is pressure, V is volume, R is specific gas constant, T is temperature. We have used this several times. So this means P by T should be equal to R by V. So this is another expression we have. So what we can do is this P by T, we can substitute using R by V. We have also done this earlier for many other cases. So putting all of those together, we get Cv dt by t plus R by V dv is equal to 0. What we also know is that for an ideal gas, Cp minus Cv is R. We know that Cv is R by gamma minus 1 and Cp is gamma into R by gamma minus 1. So we can replace the Cv by R by gamma minus 1. So instead of the Cv here, we'll get R by gamma minus 1 into dt by t plus R by V into dv. Uh, this is the dv is in the numerator. It's only the V which is in the denominator. The dv is in the numerator. So putting these together, what we see is that we have uh, R by gamma minus 1 into dt by t plus R by V into dv is equal to 0. Now the R is common. So we can get rid of the R, we can cancel it out and we can multiply by gamma minus 1 on the other side. So if we do that, what we have is we have dt by t plus gamma minus 1 into dv by v is equal to 0, which is an expression which we get using the TDS relationships and we have assumed ideal gas in two or three places so far. What we can now do is we can integrate. So integrate of dt by t is ln of t. Integration of dv by v gives ln of v. So we have ln of t plus gamma minus 1 into ln of v is some constant. So what we can find out is that so ln a plus ln v is ln a into ln v. a times ln v is ln of this to the power of this. So we see that t into v into some to the power gamma minus 1 is some other constant, not the same constant, some other constant. Uh, well, actually in this case it is the same constant and we have an expression relating t and v so far. But what we can also see is pv is rt. So therefore t is pv by r. So I can substitute that. So tv to power gamma minus 1 is constant. So in the place of t I can put pv by r which means pv by r into v power gamma minus 1 is some other constant. So this r I can divide over here. So I get c1 by r which is some other constant now. I have v to the power 1 
into v to the power gamma minus 1. So I have v to the power of gamma minus 1 plus 1, which is essentially v to the power gamma. So putting all of these together, we now get the expression pv to the power gamma equal to constant, which is the relation between pressure and volume for an ideal gas undergoing a reversible adiabatic process, essentially an isentropic process. This is an interesting expression because we have got this earlier. We have actually used it earlier. We have used it several times, but we never really looked at how it came. And now we have the relation as to how this was derived. So we derive this from the TDS relationships after assuming isentropic processes for an ideal gas. So this represents an adiabatic process only for an ideal gas. More importantly, it is only correct when we got this expression when we assumed it to be also isentropic. So uh, we have assumed quasi-static, we have assumed frictionless and we have assumed ideal gas and then we got this expression in this form. We will now go on to the rate equation of entropy. So the previous expression was more for completeness but now we will go on to rate equation of entropy. So we saw when we looked at the first law that we had the first law as d is del q minus del w and then we looked at the rate equation for a system of the first law. In a similar fashion we can now look at the rate equation of entropy. So we have ds uh, we said is equal to 1 by t into del q plus del s gen. So when you look at the rate equation we divide everything by del t. So we have ds by del t 1 by del t into del q by t plus 1 by del t into del s gen. So this gives us the rate equation of entropy. So there is one difference here which we have which was not there in the earlier expressions for example of the first law. So when you look at first law we said d by dt is del q by del t minus del w by del t and then we took uh, del t the small time going towards 0 and we got q dot minus w dot. We got d by dt is q dot minus w dot. But now there is a difference. Over here we see that we have del q and we have divided by t. So what we see is that each of these q's is associated with the temperature at which that heat is transferred. Therefore we cannot just sum up all of the del q by t together. What we need is each q divided by t has to be summed up. So we cannot just say this as q dot but we need to take individual q by t and sum up those. So what we see is that now the rate equation here becomes ds by dt for the control volume, control mass. We are looking at control masses. is sigma of 1 by 2 t into q dot plus s dot gen. So unlike in the case of the first law where we didn't need a sigma we could just say q dot. Oh, here we need to sigma 1 by t q dot because t is different for each q. If I have a system with four different boundaries and I have heat transfer through each of the boundaries, the temperature I need to consider for each of those is the temperature at the boundary where heat is being transferred. So the temperature can be different at each boundary. So I need to take that into account. So to look at an example, it says here, there is a heater in a room. It takes in 1.65 kilowatt of electrical power at steady state and transfers out heat. The temperature of the heater is 550 Kelvin. We are asked to find out the rate of total entropy generation. So what we know over here is the amount of electrical power given in. We know there is heat transfer out. We know it's a steady state. We know the temperature of the heater. We are asked to find out the rate of entropy generation. So let's look at this. So what we can do is write the rate equation of the first law which of course deals with energy. So this is a system. There are no moving parts. There is no flow. So it's a system. So d by dt for the control mass or for the system is q dot minus w dot. That is the rate equation of the first law. Uh, in this kind of a case, our system is essentially a heater. So the heater is stationary. So therefore energy dE by dt, E can be replaced. So E would be generally the internal energy plus the potential energy plus the kinetic energy. Since potential and kinetic energy are changes are negligible, we can replace this by U. And what we see is that it's a steady state, therefore this would be 0. So this term goes to 0, which means Q dot is equal to W dot. 
this takes in 1.65 kilowatt of electrical power so w dot is minus 1.65 which means q dot will also be minus 1.65 which is heat going out so q dot for this case would be minus 1.65 kilowatt of heat which is essentially heat lost by the heater okay we are given the temperature we are asked to find out total entropy generation so we can write down the rate equation of the second law which we just did so we see that ds by dt of the control mass is sigma 1 by t q dot plus s dot gen we are asked to find out s dot gen what we need is this we know that in this case it says this is happening at steady state which means this must be zero as well so there is no change in the entropy of the system therefore this left hand side is zero which means s dot gen is equal to minus 1 by t q dot so q dot is minus 1.65 so minus of that is 1.65 and kilowatt divided by 550 kelvin so that is 1.65 divided by 550 or it's 1650 watts divided by 550 which is essentially 3 watt per kelvin so that is the amount of uh, entropy which is generated so we, what we see is that this heater takes in heat sorry takes in electrical work gives out heat the energy of this heater does not change it does not create any energy it because energy is conserved whatever energy comes in as electrical work or electrical power goes out at heat the temperature of the heater does not change it is at steady state the entropy of the heater does not change it is at steady state but this heater is generating entropy which is being given out along with the heat so the heater is generating entropy at the rate of about 3 watt per kelvin and it is giving out uh, entropy all the time so this is an irreversible process where it is converting electrical power into heat we can also look at the entropy rate equation for a control volume what we saw just before this was the equation for a control mass where the mass is fixed we can look at the same for a control volume so when we are looking at conservation equations for example when you look at energy what we said is rate of change is whatever is the rate at which things are coming in minus rate at thing, which things are going out we also looked at for example conservation of mass we said rate of change of mass of the control volume is the rate at which mass is coming in minus rate at which mass is going out but now we are going to look at entropy therefore in addition to the rates at which things are coming and going out we need to look at generation because we know that entropy is not conserved so there can be entropy generation only if we add it we get the conservation equation so we need to add this as well so what we see is that okay there seems to be some issue with the display over here but anyway we see that ds by dt for the control volume is sigma of m dot i into si which is entropy which is coming in minus sigma of m dot e into se which is entropy which is going out plus q dot cv by t sigma of that because what we know is that whenever you have heat transfer if the heat transfer is not isothermal you have entropy related with it uh, well even if it is isothermal you have some entropy relation but if you have it isothermal then whatever is in the system and whatever is outside the system in the surroundings will cancel out but otherwise you have a change so you have q dot by t uh, at the different boundaries at which you have heat transfer you have to sum them up that as well and you have s dot gen which is the entropy which is generated because there are irreversibilities within the system or within the control volume what we have been looking at earlier uh, is this kind of a control volume where we have been looking at the first law what we'll remember is the first law we had de by dt for the control volume we had q dot instead of that now we have q dot by t summation we had minus w dot when you're looking at the first law and that minus w dot does not feature here because what we said is that work does not contribute to entropy because work is an orderly fashion of adding or removing energy whereas heat is a disorderly fashion of adding or removing energy so work does not feature in this uh, expression of entropy because it does not change the entropy but we had the heat term and then we have we did not have the work term and in the first law we had plus m dot i into enthalpies 
over here we have entropies and in the first law we also had kinetic and potential energies which are not showing up here and then we have entropy generation which was not there in the first law because we do not have energy generation. So we have this law which looks somewhat similar to the first law because on the in the terms of some of these terms but in other ways we see that it is quite different because we have summation here even if it is single inlet and outlet for flow we would have summation if there was different heat transfers on different boundaries and we have this entropy generation term so that is something which we see and what we can also see is that if we have a steady adiabatic process um, again this is not showing up very correctly for some reason but we had this expression from before if we had a steady process then this would be zero so the left hand side would become zero here if it was an adiabatic process this term would be zero because there would not be any q so this term also goes and you would be left with sigma of m dot i into si minus sigma of m dot e into se plus s dot gen is equal to zero and if we had only one inlet and one outlet then the sigmas can go so we have m dot i into si minus m dot e into se plus s dot gen is equal to zero or what we can do is we can take this term to the left hand side if we had only one inlet and one outlet and if it is a steady state then from mass conservation we know m dot i is equal to m dot e is equal to some m dot and we can cancel out those and divide s dot gen by m dot so what we are left with is this s e is equal to s i plus s gen or what we see is that entropy at the exit is equal to entropy at the inlet plus the entropy which is generated we know that none of these can be negative entropy individually cannot be negative we know that si has some value s gen is always positive so therefore the entropy at the exit is inlet plus some positive value therefore entropy at the exit must always be greater than or equal to the entropy at the inlet if this value was zero which is what would happen in the reversible process then we get se equal to si if this value is non-zero, we get SE is greater than SI or essentially entropy at the exit is greater than the entropy at the inlet. When it's a reversible process, we get these two as equal and we have actually been using this in uh, several problems which we already solved in the previous assignment as well, but we never formally derived it and now we see that we have a formal derivation for it as well. Of course, if we have entropy generation, then we need to know something about the states so that we can use these formulae. But in the case of a reversible process, it's a lot easier to calculate and we have been doing that for many cases so far. So what we are going to do is uh, stop here and then continue later. Thank you.